we can work out in some detail the vibrational spectroscopy of triatomic molecules. For larger molecules, we can identify how many normal modes of vibration there are. But dealing with a simple four-atom system, like ethine, it's actually quite hard to find where the modes are. And ethine is really simple because it's very symmetrical. If you have an unsymmetrical molecule, where you've got a lot of nuclei, therefore a lot of vibrational modes, it's very hard to pin down where all those vibrational modes are going to appear in the spectrum. It's very hard even to identify them. But of course we're very interested in the infrared spectroscopy of large molecules because we would like to use this as a tool for identifying molecules. So what we do is just assign particular vibrations in molecules to particular functional groups. Right, so it's important to remember that the normal mode of a molecule is characteristic of the entire molecule. Nevertheless, we can often think of some of those normal modes as really being dominated by just two or a few atoms moving. For example, any molecule that has a carbonyl functionality in it, C double bond O, doesn't matter how big that molecule is, it will have a strong absorption in the infrared spectrum around about 1700 wave numbers, somewhere between 1650 and 1750 wave numbers. So we associate that particular observation with a carbonyl functionality. Even though it's really a normal mode and all of the other atoms are moving as well, we don't care about that. We say if we see that very strong vibration, we're probably dealing with a carbonyl. There are other very characteristic vibrations. C triple bond N and C triple bond C both absorb around about the 2,000 and a few hundred wave number region of the spectrum. That's because they're strong bonds. They're triple bonds, so they're going to have very high frequencies. It turns out that the C triple bond N is a very intense absorption. The C triple bond C is actually a very weak absorption. That's associated with the size of the dipole moment change. Up here, above 3,000 wave numbers, or around 3,000 wave numbers, we see lots of CH stretches. The CH bond is relatively strong, and the H atom is very light. So that, according to the equation that we were working out yesterday, corresponds to a high frequency of vibration. So that appears around about the 3,000 wave number region. And there are other <laughs> characteristic vibrations of molecules that one can see. C double bond C appears around about 1,600 wave numbers. The phenyl ring has a characteristic pair of vibration around about 1,500 to 1,600 wave numbers. As you go down in frequency, then the density of lines in the spectrum starts to get higher and higher, and it becomes more and more difficult to pick out individual functional groups. There are a few. For example, the CO bond absorbs around about 1,200 wave numbers. That's quite characteristic. But once you get down here, you're in what we call the fingerprint region of the spectrum. So the spectrum becomes very hard to assign on a spectroscopic basis. That is, you can't say that one particular mode corresponds to motions of one particular set of nuclei. But because it becomes so complicated, then that whole region becomes characteristic of the individual molecule. And so you can use that region like an identification code for the particular molecule that you're interested in.